It's the time for mm, pick it from China. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are back with a new Embernic product. For the people who have no idea what Embernic is, Embernic is one of the, I can say one of the biggest, let's say AliExpress resellers that sells a lot of different handhelds. And they brought the handhelds to the next level with the RG300X. Is this also like the next level or is this just the same shit that we've seen before? First of all, what I do like about this thing is like how it looks. You can already see it through the plastic protection bag. The packaging is like really nice nowadays, but when it comes to this handheld, oh boy, this thing looks so cool. It's almost like this let's say, new generation of the Nintendo Game Boy Micro. Only this time we're going to get more like a beefy version about it. But let's take a close look at it later. Let's take a close look what's inside the box itself. Okay, we're going to get the Type-C cable. Finally, they're starting to use Type-C cables. That took like freaking forever. With Embernic, you're going to get like very nice manuals, like the unfoldable toilet paper edition with a little bit of a glossy. And we'll give you an explanation how everything works, how you need to transfer files, etc., etc. There will be like tutorials on YouTube in general, like people will explain how this works, but it's like a really convenient thing. So you're going to get actually like a manual that we can actually use. But let's take a close look at the handheld. Mm, like this nice. This is very nice, very nice, very nice. But how good is the handheld? All right, so let's take a close look at this new 300X model. It looks very similar to the Nintendo Game Boy Micro. Uh, sadly, I don't own one at this moment in my collection, but I had it back in today's. And I must say that it is very similar in many ways. And overall, we're going to get the ABXY configuration over here, the four buttons. Then we're going to get select and start. At the bottom, we're going to get the reset. The fun fact, like in the beginning with this, let's say the first generation, we didn't have reset buttons or they were like very hard to reach, but now we do get those. Then we're going to get two slots for TF cards, one for the firmware, another one for the files. So that is a quite interesting concept. They keep continue doing with these handhelds. We're going to get the headphone jack out, something you don't see very often. The on and off switch, and at the top, we're going to get the HD out. Then we're going to get two connections for charging. Another one can be used for different functions like input for devices. Then we're going to get a nice chrome shiny like shoulder buttons. And they are all like clicky micro switches, but I personally really love. Then we're going to get here volume control, something you don't see very often too, because some handheld like use configurations like they need to press a couple of buttons for, let's say reconfiguring the, so yeah, let's say the volume control. If you put it, and in the on position, then we're going to get a very nice light up buttons over here. The select and start. Like I really love these tiny things they do. Give more like a premium feeling to it. And not to forget, at the front we're going to get two speakers. And I can say these things sound quite good. Well, let's take a close look at the audio, or better said, let's hear it. Because the audio quality of this thing is pretty damn good. This model, we are back with the Open Dingux device or the software. But the people have no idea, like Open Dingux is an, can I say, a version we have seen before when it comes to operating systems. It has a lot of potential. This is basically how it operates. You're pressing the shoulder buttons. Here you can see we're going to get applications, emulators, games, settings, and applications. And we're back. And here we're going to get in the emulator list quite some different emulators and a lot of different options. We can play, let's say, from the old school Atari up to PlayStation 1 with these devices. I know there is an N64 emulator, but don't even bother checking it out because this device is not even powerful to run for run it. And even if it's so, I'm guessing the emulator will not be having a big support of games. Then we're going to get a lot of homebrew games. Think about Quake 1, 2, Street of Rage Remake, a lot of fun things. And I say like when it comes to the homebrew games, this particular part of it I really like about Open Dingux. So it's time for the Wicked Nerdy Talk because we need to talk about the specs. I was a little bit disappointed seeing this, especially when you're looking at the memory. So far I can understand this thing only has 512 megabytes of memory. The CPU is a 4770, runs on 1 gigahertz, it's a dual core. The resolution of the display is 640 by 480, but when you're looking at the overall specs, it's mediocre. And I must say, that was the most disappointing part about this handheld. Simply because, it's not the greatest. 
So I find it a little bit disappointing that we're going to get a very tiny screen compared with all the other versions that we've seen here on the channel. But when you're looking at the view angle, it looks very crisp, clear, and it's like a viewing angle. Mm -mm -mm. I really like it a lot. So that is like, we're going to get a tiny screen, but we're going to get a very nice looking screen in general. But how much does it weigh? Let's take a close look at that. So this device only weighs 140. So, but brain fart. Don't forget to check out the Wicked Brain Fart channel. But we're going to get 154 grams in total. And I must say, that is not a lot. So if you're searching for a compact design with a beautiful display and doesn't need to have like a lot of weight, this can be quite an interesting option. Okay, first try, I just want to see the Street of Rage Red game. And the reason why is because this game is quite demanding and a lot of these open dingus devices does have an issue with this. And with issue, I mean like pretty damn annoying slowdown. So let's take a close look at this gameplay just to see how it will run. Because this game is maybe old. Okay, let's put it this way, sometimes it does that. Okay. The first thing I'm noticing, like this D-pad is excellent. Like I freaking love it. I can see myself playing for hours on this device because it's not heavy. It's quite a compact but comfortable of, uh, design. But you can see like it still keeps stuttering here and there. So this game is way, well, not way too demanding, but oh, 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 oh. Oof. Let's try some other games. All right, so let's take a close look at PlayStation 1. So the first thing I'm noticing with this device is that it struggles with PlayStation. And this is not even like the most demanding game. Another thing that I also like about this is like the D-pad. Like you can see like trying some moves, it works instantly. Like this is just amazing how good the D-pad is. Another thing I really like about it is the vibration function. When I was playing this game now, and sadly, I cannot let you hear it simply because it's so like very slim that you can hear it. But I can feel the vibration function that is working perfectly with the emulator. So I think that is a really cool add-on that you don't see with the first generation of devices. Okay, and here you can see like, oh boy, it's struggling. Such a bummer that this PlayStation 1 doesn't run perfectly because in combination with Street of Rage... Why? do he mess up? Okay, so what can we play? So if you want to become a little bit of beefcake with Wolfie and Beefcake, you can just play some old school 18 and 60 bit games perfectly. But the thing is like, the problem I'm having with this is that there are so many options out there. I personally really love the design. I really love the D-pad itself. And yeah, there is no analog stick. So if you want to have an analog stick, you will be disappointed. But in overall quality, I must say that I am surprised and Ambenic did release a very nice handheld with the 300th edition. But is this one of the best ones? Nah, not at all. Do like the display itself. Wolfie, wolfie, wolfie time. Wolfie, wolfie, wolfie time. Beefcake and wolfie is the way they go in 2021. So Embernic releases another handheld, and the reason I'm saying another handheld because these uh, these companies are making too many handhelds, in my opinion. To this one, I must say, maybe we're even going to get like in top ten position. Don't know for sure. We'll see in the end of the year. But the reason I do like it is just the form factor. It's really nice. It looks nice, and the D-pad. Oh boy, I am a D-pad fetish guy, and the D-pad is very important for me personally. And oh, this hits the spot perfectly. So when you're looking at the 300X model, I really like it. And I like it because it has a nice display, got a good D-pad, I'm a D-pad guy. And when you're looking at the shoulder buttons, it's really nice. But the problem I'm having with this is like the power. That is something I don't like. It cannot even run PlayStation 1. What the hell is going on? Like there are so many of these freaking devices from AliExpress nowadays that we can play some PlayStation 1. And this is the thing I'm hoping in the future they will improve. And I'm not talking about, maybe you can overclock it, nope, just out of the box and just play the games. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.